Hey, what's up everyone? Paul from Grindhouse Funhouse, that's me. Doing my first ever live on Instagram. Why am I doing this to myself? Am I a crazy person? I've never been live on anything, anywhere, except maybe the radio. But um, I thought I'd try something new in these trying times. It's been crazy out there. How you doing? How you writing this out, this pandemic? This uh, quarantine, are you watching a lot of movies? I know I am right now. I saw last night The Hunt, which came out two weeks ago, but because all the cinemas have been, you know, shut down, Universal decided, let's put it out there for everyone to see because people are bored. And I saw it and uh, it's pretty damn good. It's pretty damn good. If you've seen movies like Surviving the Game, starring Ice-T or Trespass, starring Ice-T, then uh, you know what it's about. It's pretty much uh, people hunting people and uh, it's pretty good. Perry Gilbin or Betty Gilbin, that's her name, star making performance, just really damn good. And actually, if you want a double bill, I will suggest to you to see Ready or Not, which was one of my favorite movies last year. It has a similar theme and Samara Weaving was in this and she'll be in the new uh, Bill and Ted Phase the music coming out this summer, hopefully. And, uh, you know, just two blonde ladies getting shit done, killing people. It's, uh, it's pretty good. Check it out. So basically, I wanted to try something new in these trying times. I don't do shit on the fly like this. Usually I'm very prepared when I do my videos. At least I think I do. I am. And um, I was thinking, what would be worthy of a live broadcast? Well, how about showing my movie collection. People have been asking me, Paul, what are on your shelves? What movies are on your shelves? And um, that's like two or three people have been asking me this. And uh, <laughs> so basically I thought to myself, well, there I got two libraries in the back, nine shelves each plus the tops. So that makes 20. So that could make 20 videos. That could be a whole goddamn series. Oh my God. And uh, since I have a lot of time on my hands right now, not working anymore, not making any money. But the upside to this is I've been working a lot on videos for Grindhouse Funhouse. Subscribe if you haven't and why you haven't, I don't know why. Follow my silly adventures. So many silly adventures. Um, but I think it's helping me keeping my video editing skills sharp. At least I'm hoping. So uh, yeah. Um, so basically I'll do one shelf per video, I guess. And then I'll put it on the YouTubes afterwards because why not? Because uh, I need content, we all need content. Hell, I'm on Instagram right now, ranting and raving. <laughs> Thanks, Francis. Um, so uh, fair warning, uh, some of the movies I'll be showing, it's like, why is this in your collection? It's not very grindhouse, fun housey. And I'll say to that, mind your damn business. No, I won't say that. I'll say that I've been collecting movies on and on for 20 years now. I am an old person. 20 years worth of movies and collecting. Actually, the first movie I ever bought that I remember was uh, Batman 1989. That Christmas with my own money. Went to uh, the Bay, I think it was. A giant uh, store here in Canada. And uh, I actually still got the tape somewhere out there. Um, but yeah, it's been, I've been collecting since I was like 12 years old. That's crazy to think about. Crazy. Um, and it's only been 10 years since I've been into like cult and underground cinema. So there's a mix a lot of that. And there's a, way more DVDs than Blu-rays because Blu-rays I got laid on that train. And I was like, I don't want to have to like upgrade every damn DVD I have. But at some point I bought the new movies I was buying and buy them on Blu-ray. So uh, I'm, I'm up to like four or 500 of them now. It's a wonder I'm not in the poor house, but uh, the, I don't have any 4Ks though. I, I think I got two, three, 4Ks and that's about it. Cause you know, fuck that. I'm not gonna, that's it. Blu-rays is the end of the line. Cause uh, I don't need uh, the best of the best of, uh, I feel like 4K is too real. It's just too damn real. I don't want real. I want a little bit fake in the movies I watch. So um, yeah, so there you go.
Um, how about I start this up? I'm gonna flip the phone over, shoot it on that shelf over there, and start start it up, see where it leads. I don't know where it's gonna lead. This is crazy, this is live right now. Why am I doing this? I'm a crazy person. Holy hell. All right, let's do this. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Flip. All right, so let's start this up. Let's start that first one. I'm just gonna read what people are saying right now because I am curious. Uh huh. All right, you're crazy. All right, Francis, whatever. So let's start this up. First movie, 187, Samuel L. Jackson plays a. I think it was it a teacher or a school attendant, like attendant. I don't know. It's pretty good. All right. Next, 200 cigarettes. One of those uh, early 2000 with all the actors uh, known around that time. Paul Rudd, Jay Moore, Janine Garofalo, Dave Chappelle. It's like a crazy night. I think it's New Year's Eve or something. Ben Affleck, Kate Upson. There we go. Up next, we got 300, which uh, I haven't rewatched. Will I rewatch it? I don't know. I'm not sure. Then we have 1408, Stephen King, John Cusack, again, Samuel L. Jackson, stuck in a hotel room going crazy. 1941, Steven Spielberg, Dan Aykroyd, John Belushi. One of probably the only Steven Spielberg movies I haven't seen yet, but I do want to. So there you go, 1941. 2010, the year we make contact, sequel to 2001 with the Roy Scheider right here. Not seen in the end, but it's directed by Peter Hyams, a great action movie director from the 80s and 90s. So there you go. Then we have A Fish Called Wanda, Jamie Curtis, Kevin Klein. There you go. Charles Swans, A Glimpse Inside of the Mind of, with Charlie Sheen in his uh, crazy period. I think it's uh, directed by Roman Coppola, one of the Coppolas. I actually got it for this man right here, Mr. Bill, Bill Murray. But uh, it's a, a very small movie. I barely remember it. Not that good. Up next, History of Violence. Steven, I was gonna say Steven Cooper. <laughs> David Cronenberg, of course. One of his, uh, was it 2000 or 90s? I think it's in the 2000s. But yeah. History of Violence, here we go. All right, up next, this is one of those movies that why is it in your collection? I don't know, I bought it a long, long time ago, A League of Their Own, Gina Davis, Tom Hanks, Madonna, why not? A Life Less Ordinary, early Danny Boyle movie with Edwin McGregor, Cameron Diaz, kind of a post uh, Pulp Fiction kind of movies with coming out. Definitely one of those. Then we have another stakeout with the, 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 the amazing trio of Richard Dreyfuss, Rosie O'Donnell and Emilio Estevez. Who doesn't want that in their collection? Apparently I did. So there you go. Next, nine and a half weeks, a sexy movie with uh, fruits and food being uh, rubbed against each other. That's the takeaway I got from this movie. <laughs> Mickey Rourke and uh, Kim Basinger right here. All right, then classic sci-fi, 12 Monkeys, Terry Gilliam right here. Up next, the 13 Warrior, John McTernan, one of the best action movie director ever. May, may I say to you, die hard, just right there. The man can do no wrong, except not pay his taxes and go to jail for years and years. But other than that, you know. Then we got 16 Blocks, one of those movies where uh, a character needs to go from one 
location to another and that's the whole damn movie and everyone's after them Bruce Willis Moe's death it's I believe it's uh, Richard Donner that did this yes it is it's one of his last movies I believe 21 hours at Munich based on the is like the, the in 72 at the Olympics when they kidnapped the uh, what was it like the Black September what was it yeah that movie that one where they kidnap a, a whole entire team and uh, shit goes down there you go with uh, Shirley Knight and Franco Nero oh Franco Nero's in this um, da, 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 da. up next 24 hour party people based on Tony Wilson's life who uh, created the factory record label where uh, you know New Order and uh, Happy Mondays great great movies from the 2000s right here all right then we have 25th hour sorry for the glare and Norton Spike Lee I have not seen this I, I want to but it's a long ass movie it's like two and a half hours maybe that's why I haven't seen it yet but I've heard really good things really good things up next a movie I'm probably gonna watch rewatch soon because it's very uh, apropos of our times right now 28 days later right here classic first movie where zombies got to run now and not go creepily slow so there you go then we have steelbook of 30 Days of Night with uh, Josh Hartnett. One, I'd say one of my favorite vampire movies. Uh, David Slade directed this. Great visualist. Uh, he really got a good eye. Uh, and I like the premise where like 30 Days of Night is there in Alaska and uh, night falls and lasts 30 days and then that's when vampires come, on, come around and you know eat people up. So uh, yeah, if you haven't seen this movie, it is uh, one of my recommendations. It is really good. Classic Eddie Murphy, 48 Hours, Nick Nolte, right here. Then we have another 48 Hours, which I actually saw in theaters in 1990. That's right, I saw this. My first Arrow video, Blu-ray. 52 pickups, Roy Scheider again on Margaret, film from the 80s. I have not seen it yet. I will eventually. Movie from Julie Delpy and Adam Goldberg, Two Days in Paris. And then they did a sequel, Two Days in New York. Julie Delpy wrote and directed this. And uh, it's a, it's a, I want to say a carbon copy of what she did with Before Sunrise, Sunset and uh, Midnight, but uh, clearly inspired from that kind of movie. But it's a good one. Then we have uh, Two Days in the Valley. That is a total ripoff of uh, Pulp Fiction. Or like, can it be an homage, even if it came out probably like a year or two later? I think this came out in 96, yeah, two years later. But uh, it's, it's pretty good from what I remember. And look at this cast. It's kind of, uh, you know, Daniel Leal, Jeff Daniels, um, James Spader, Eric Stoltz, who was in Pulp Fiction. But uh, yeah, Two Days in the Valley. Another classic paranoia 70s movie, Three Days of the Condor with Robert Redford right here. Mm hmm. My first Arnie movie, The Sixth Day. Not a very good one. I think this is one of the last movies he did before he became governor of California. Right here. First Cage movie, 8 millimeters. Not seen it yet. Why well, haven't seen this yet? It's, it's a mystery to me. I know it's Joel Schumacher right here. You can see the clear rage cage right here. It's, uh, I hear it's, uh, it's really good. Tell me if it's good. I will watch it sooner rather than later up next Jeff Bridges was on a Harquette eight million ways to die Kino Lorber and their crappy spine I don't like their spines uh, <laughs> I've not seen it yet but uh, looks looks pretty cool one of my favorite all-time directors Richard Licklater uh, Scanner Darkly um, 
in one of those movies he did uh, I think he did two this one and uh, fuck what's the other one Waking Life they did the ro rotoscopy which basically drawing over their performance they shot everything live as they do and then they put on there like uh, it's like a drawn pretty much drawn and it looks really cool and you get some Keanu action in there we're in the, the Keanu renaissance right now which is awesome uh, a simple plan Sam Raimi a nice little uh, caper thriller with uh, Bill Paxton rest in peace Billy Pop Thornton and uh, Bridget Fonda she does not act anymore she's out of the business but uh, that is a classic classic movie and the movie I saw in theaters in the early 90s <laughs> a stranger among us Melanie Griffith uh, I think she what was it like she infiltrates acidic Jews in New York to solve a crime because she, she's a cop and she falls in love with one of the the, the one of the members in the congregation I guess or something like that but uh, yeah right there how about some Spielberg AI inter uh, <clears throat> artificial intelligence never seen it I know of it didn't feel like seeing it the last um, Kubrick production you wrote it I think it was a, a spec script a script and then Spielberg decided to honor the master by shooting it um, I haven't seen it yet I will I'm sure eventually how about a, a midnight movie title the, Ab uh, the abominable Dr. Fibes with um, Vincent Price right here so yes you got that ooh some early Seagal right here above the law Steven Seagal when he wasn't that much of a douche he was still a douche now he's a uber douche but he was so good from like 1988 to 1992 and then he went all to shit but this movie is the good stuff made with Andrew Davis then we have The Abyss James Cameron one of his most, uh, I'd say, underrated, I guess, because it's not talked about a lot. And it's still on DVD, no Blu-ray with True Lies. They still hasn't pulled the trigger on this, so I don't know why he should. The Abyss, good stuff. All right, how about some Ace Ventura Pet Detective? I saw that in theaters too. Still funny movie after all these years right here ooh other classic 80s action action Jackson I need to get the blu-ray Carl Weathers Craig T. Nielsen Vanity may she rest in peace early Sharon Stone right here action Jackson one of the genius of cinema Spike Jones and it uh, I think it's uh, isn't it written by Kaufman I believe uh, da, 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 da. yeah Charlie Kaufman wrote this who did also being uh, John Malkovich Nick Cage Meryl Streep Chris Cooper probably one of Cage's last good movie before he went back and did like uh, Mandy and you know Color Out of Space and a little classic 80s you know those are the cheesy comedies Adventures in Babysitting with the lovely Elizabeth Shue so hot back in the day and I think it's the first movie by uh, Chris Columbus for that wrote Gremlins and this was his first shot of uh, at movie directing right here another underrated action movie from 1990 the adventures of Ford Furlane Andrew Dice Clay the Dice Man I'm sure if you've never seen this it's the only movie is like really tolerable I guess even for me even though it plays kind of a a bit of a douche in there too but uh, Wayne Newton is like the bad guy in the movie but uh, very much worth a watch if you haven't seen it I paid 25 cents for this that's why I have it there you go another underrated movie from Martin Scorsese this time After Hours right here classic New York movie love those uh, New York movies at night that is one of them then we have <clears throat> Air America Mel Gibson Robert Downey Jr fun little Vietnam era movie loved it pretty good 
Ooh, up next. That is a classic comedy from the 90s. Right here, Airheads, Brandon Fraser, Stephen Buscemi, Adam Sandler, if you've never seen it. That is a fun afternoon movie. Just uh, put that on your list. You'll thank me later, Airheads. Then we have Airplane, the Zucker Brothers right here. The Don't Call Me Shirley edition. Classic comedy with the, the main man, Leslie Nielsen. There you go. Then we have the uh, very much lesser sequel, Airplane 2, the sequel. Not as good, barely memorable. So there we go. Another Martin Scorsese movie. Alice doesn't live here anymore. Never seen it, but uh, I love owning Scorsese movies. So it is in my collection. I'll get to it eventually, I'm sure. Oh, the first uh, Albert Pune movie, Pune movie, Alien, Alien from LA, right here. It is a, a canon movie. And as you know, I love canon. Who doesn't love canon films? My God, if you love cult and underground cinema, you're automatically a fan of canon, I would imagine. Then we have, oh my God, uh, Alan Quatermain and uh, what was it? Uh, and the Lost City of Gold, which is kind of a ripoff of, um, of Indiana Jones and a ripoff of uh, Jewel of the Nile. So it's like three deep. And uh, it's not very good, not very good at all. Up next, Alligator, a movie everyone wants on Blu-ray, but somehow hasn't made it the, the jump yet. And it stars the late, great Robert Forster. And it's pretty much an alligator eating people up in the city. And it's fan-fucking-tastic. Watch this one, get on it. Amazon Woman on the Moon, uh, uh, anthology comedy. And uh, one of the one that's most remembered, I think, is the one with Arsenio Hall that comes to mind. And it just was announced as a, I don't know if it's Kino or someone else that's going to release this on Blu-ray very, very soon. But uh, it's a fun little comedy right here. Fun vignettes. Altered States. Weird, weird movie from the early 80s, directed by, who was it, uh, Ken Russell. Uh, I've seen it. I barely remember it because I dozed off pretty much a couple of times during it. So I really need to watch it because what I remember watching was uh, pretty, pretty cool. But uh, yeah, shame on me for falling asleep on this one. A Blind Buy, The Ambassador with Robert Mitchum, Ellen Burstyn, Rock Hudson. There you go, little Kino Lorber. Another blind buy right here. A Kevin Costner movie, American Flyers, about uh, you know bike racing. This came out, uh, I think what year this came out? 1984 something, 85. And it's John Badam, love that guy. Makes a lot of cool, cool movies. So there you go. Up next. More canon, American Ninja 2, American Ninja 3. Then we have American Ninja 4, The Annihilation, Michael Dudikoff. I know Arrow released a box set, was it a couple years ago? I think I need to get on that. But uh, yeah, if you want some American Ninja in your life, that's it, that's where you go. How about a documentary from the Hughes Brothers, American Pimp? about the pimp life, the pimp game. They follow some real pimps and got the, the skinny on what, uh, how to be a pimp. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's pretty good. American Psycho, you know, you know, everyone knows about this movie right here. Um, we got this right here, the Amid Amityville Horror. First one, James Brolin, Margot Kidder, Fox Tiger. I have not seen that yet. I know, I'm terrible. I'm a terrible person for not seeing it. And then I got Amityville 2, The Possession, right here. 
Another comedy from, uh, I believe, uh, 1993. And I saw that one in theaters too. Amos and Andrew, another Cage movie with Samuel L. Jackson. Danny Coleman, right here. What a terrible cover, my God. Up next, we got an American Werewolf in London. I need to get the Arrow set. I haven't bought it yet. Yes. Yes, Francis, I'm a terrible person. Uh, <laughs> the sort of sequel, I guess. Uh, American Werewolf in Paris with uh, Julie Delpy and Tom Everett Scott. It's uh, just okay. You know, you don't need to see this. It's not a, a, a must. Um, some Chuck Norris. How about some Chuck Norris? An eye for an eye. Look at this cover. This is so fucking awesome. Chuck Norris is the man. Chuck can do no wrong. Right here. Christopher Lee as the bad guy. Yes. Right here. Next, someone we cancel from the, this culture. Woody Allen, Annie Hall, Diane Keetle, Ke Keetle? Keaton. Uh, right here. Mm -hmm. A football movie. There you go. Any given Sunday, Oliver Stone. Look at this cast right here. Al Pacino. You know, Dennis Quay, Jamie Foxx, Cameron Diaz, James Wood, LL Cool J right here. Any given Sunday. Uh, right here. Um, I got Apocalypse Now, The Complete Dossier. I actually have a, a steel book up there that uh, probably has everything that's on this thing, but somehow it's still in my collection, so I don't know why. I'm going to leave it there. Uh, next, another movie I saw in theaters, Apollo 13. Great, great movie. Tom Hanks, Ron Howard. You know, even though you know what happened, it, it was still thrilling to watch. So right there. Some more canon films. The Apple, a uh, musical, The Power of Rock in 1994. So it was a musical set in the future of 1994. And uh, it is directed by um, the, what was his name? Uh, Gold, eh, da, 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 da. Mahalan Golan, which is one of the, the co-creators, I guess, of Canon Films. And he was a director too, so that's uh, one of his masterpieces, The Apple. Up next, Arm and Dangerous, John Candy, comedy, Eugene Levy, Meg Ryan. I think I believe it's 88 or 89. It's uh, not good. <laughs> it's not a good movie. Um, up next, Army of Darkness, the Screwhead Edition, right here. Uh, great finale to the trilogy, I guess so. Uh, more so like the series, the three seasons we had of uh, Ash vs. Evil Dead. That is way, way better, but uh, it's good. It's still good. A movie shot right here in Montreal. The Art of War, Wesley Snipes. Christian Duguay directed this. He also directed the, the Scanner sequel right here, but uh, yeah, action movie with uh, Mr. Snipes right here. We're almost done, people. We're almost done. Up next, Aspen Extreme, one of those uh, ski movies from the early 90s. They still made some of those. Most of them were in the 80s, but we got Aspen Extreme at some point in our lives. Ooh, first Bronson in my collection assassination with his wife i can't remember her name what is her name jill ireland there you go i believe he plays a secret agent that protects the president or the uh the vice president i'm not quite sure i have not seen that yet but uh can't wait i love some chuck some chuck it is chuck some bronson movies then we have john carpenter assault on precinct 13th I need to get the uh, Screen Factory edition of this. Should be pretty good. Then we have the uh, remake starring uh, Ethan Hawke, Lawrence Fishburne, Assault on Pressing 13th. It's pretty good actually for, for what it is. Most, Sega, most uh, remakes sucks, but uh, I enjoyed this. Ja Rule. My God, Ja Rule's in this. You need to see this for Ja Rule. For Ja, do it for Ja. And the very last movie in the 
In this first shelf is Mel Gibson, Sam Neill in Attack, Attack Force Z, which is shot in Australia in the early 80s, I believe. It is directed by uh, Tim Burstall, because we all know Tim Burstall, right? So yeah, Attack Force Z. So I am done. I am done doing this. Um, I hope this was entertaining. Was it entertaining? You'll let me know. Um, I might do another shelf by the end of the week, depending uh, how crazy I am by the end of the week. Like I feel so isolated and stuff. But uh, stay tuned for it. You might enjoy it. Who knows? I might enjoy doing it. Uh, that's it for my first live Instagram thing. I will say to you bye-bye for now. Later.